To God be the glory, honor and praise for our being here today. Amen. God is so good to us. He has blessed us to come together one more time. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad that he did. Amen. Amen. He's washed over us and walked with us all week long. Blessed our going out and coming in. Amen. Kept us day and night. And for that, we ought to give him praise and give him thanks. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I realize I could have been dead a long time ago. Amen. It's not because I've been so good that I'm still alive. But it's only because he's good. Amen. His grace and mercy has kept us covered, and we are grateful to him for that. I want to say welcome to all of you who are here this morning. We welcome all of you who are with us in service, as well as those of you who are joining in with us in our fellowship hall. We also want to welcome all who are with us virtually. We are so glad that you took the time out to worship the Lord with us on today. Amen. Amen. We're just so glad to have you. So glad to see all of our visitors with us today. Amen. Would the visitors please stand? We just want to recognize our visitors. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate you so very much. Thank you for being with us on, on today. Let me mention that uh, though our custom is here at our church uh, the week before Christmas, and the week after Christmas, um, we are shut down uh, as far as during the week is concerned that on December the 19th through the 23rd and the 26th through the 30th of December, uh, the two weeks that we will be shut down. The services will still be going on on Sundays, amen, and we look forward to that. And so we would that you would govern yourself according to this uh, announcement. Also on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, our services will convene as is. We're going to keep it at 11.15. Amen. And so, uh, amen. We're going to keep it at 11.15. We're going to keep it at 11.15. And we're going to come and worship the Lord. Our services usually last an hour anyway. And so we'll, we're going to plan to do that prayerfully by the help of the Lord. And so we look forward to seeing you here on last Sunday in this month which is Christmas Day. Amen, amen. God bless you, and may the Lord ever keep you is our prayer. I'm gonna ask you to join in with us for a congregational number at this time. What a fellowship, what a joy divine on the everlasting what a blessing, what a peace in mind on the everlasting. I am leaning, I am leaning, I am saying. I am lean, I am lean, I am leaning, leaning on the everlasting. Oh, I'm lean, I am lean, I am safe and secure. From all, I am leaning. I am leaning. I am leaning on the everlasting. Home. God bless you, our deacons and children. morning church my prayer we all have had so far have had a wonderful morning he blessed us all okay I'll be reading from Psalms 86 the number of Psalms 
verses 6 to 13. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the days of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and doeth wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. I read from Psalms 86, verses 6 through 13. May God have blessed upon the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy and divine word. Our Father, our Father, here's again and I come by and on bend the knee just to say thank you one more time. Father, I come thanking you for watching over me all last night while I slept and while I slumber. Early this morning, it was real early this morning, you touch me with the key of nature. Call these eyes of mine to open to see a brand new day. And I just had to say thank you. When I rose this morning, I yet was able to walk. I just had to say thank you. I was able to see. I just had to thank you. Because I realized, I realized that somebody rose this morning but wasn't able to walk. Somebody rode this morning, had eyes, but wasn't able to see. That's why I love to bow down and call on your holy name. Your name, there's power in your holy name. It was your name that I heard about a long time ago when I was on my way, on my way to hell. With no God on my side. But I'm so glad that you turned me around. Ever since that day, I've been running on in your holy name. Sometime I've been up and sometime I've been down. Well, through it all, through it all, I had to say thank you. My father, as I'm bowed here this morning, I come praying for our pastor this morning. Give him a word for you people this morning. If there was a time we need you, we need you right now. Realize that Satan is not trying to destroy our people. But I know you still, still got that same problem that you had when you turned me around one day. There was a time in my life, I wouldn't call on you. Holy name. Enough, I call on your holy name. When the dangerous highway, I call on your holy name. If I'm in my bed, laying in my bed, crossing and turning, I say, Jesus, I need you right now. He come on and see about me. After a while, after a while, you rock me on the sleeve. Father, I love to call on your holy name. There's power in your holy name. There you can speak and man will lay down and die. You can speak in that same man and live again. Father, if there was a time, my father, I'm not going to ask you to go to the hospital because I know you are there. As I'm calling on your holy name this morning, I'm asking a special blessing on Brother George Richard. Father, you know all about it. The reason I know you know all about it because you made him. You've been with him before, but I know you ain't brought him this far to leave him. Boy, now, Father, I come praying for that sinner man. 
touch me, turn around before it's everlasting too late. I realize it get late, late in the evening. You say man must work while it's day. When nighttime comes, no man can be able to work. Father, I love to call on your holy name. I look back over my life. I waited so many years went by. I wouldn't call on your holy name, but I call on your name anytime, anywhere. There was a time I get around my friend. I say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I wouldn't say it loud, but you let me live long enough. I love to call on your holy name. I said, Jesus, Jesus, I'm your child. Because I realized, I realized one day I'm going to have to leave this old world. I'm going to a better place. Over there won't be no sick days over there. Every day will be hiding, hiding over there. I got loved ones already going on. It'll be all right to see them, but I want to see Jesus. I want to see the one that came down and turned me around. Father, when it's all over, when it's all over, I don't mean to stay down long, but I feel good this morning because this just may be my last time. I don't know. My father, I'm not going to ask you to search my heart this morning because you already know. You know all about it. If there's anything around it like sin, Father, please move it. Please move it. Don't let my living be in vain. Deep blessing, right now, son. Jesus' name, amen, and thank God.
work it out. While we're trying to figure it out. He's already worked it out. Amen. 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 I don't know what was bothering you when you showed up here this morning. But whatever it is, you ought to turn it over to Jesus. Because he can work it out. And I'm wondering, is there anybody else in here other than me that know for yourself that he can work it out? Amen. Every time, he'll work it out. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 He'll work it out. Amen. He'll work it out. Amen. Amen. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. And you know, you don't have to wait till after he work it out to give him praise. <laughs> Even before it's done, <laughs> you can still give him praise because you know some way, somehow, he gonna work it out. Amen. Amen. God be praised this morning. We certainly want to thank these singers for encouraging our hearts to know that God will work it out. Amen. Amen. We are up to our prayer time now. We want to remember Sister Betty Alexander in our prayers. Uh, she's out of the hospital, but uh, she's, she's still close to where they have to do procedures and so forth, a check on her. But Brother Alexander called me this morning and said she is coming along real good. Amen. Amen. And so we're grateful. We're grateful to God for, for that. We also want to pray for Sister Miriam Coleman. Uh, we want to lift up in prayer. She wanted me to let everybody know that she appreciate uh, our prayers on her behalf. Amen. We also want to remember in prayer the father of Brother Lucian Dixon of Florida. Let's continue to pray for him. Also, Sister Janet Edwards is in ICU. Uh, here in Lufkin. Let's continue to lift her up in prayer. Also, Brother George Richard, Sister Carolyn Wilson, let's uh, lift her up in prayer as well. We also want to remember uh, in bereavement, uh, Sister Karen Bindham and the loss of her sister. Uh, the service is yet pending. Uh, I think her name is Cecilia Coulter uh, is her sister's name, and so we want to pray for Sister Bindham and family in the loss of her sister. Also want to remember Sister Yvette Cole and family in the loss of her uncle, uh, Mr. Ollie Foreman. The service was held on yesterday. Amen. So let's pray for them that God would give them comfort. Also want to pray for Sister Barbara Stearns and Sister Marva Simmons in the loss of their brother, O.D. Kelly. Amen. We certainly want you all to know you have our condolences and we want to lift them up in prayer as well. And whatever you stand in need of, amen, it's prayer time. If you want to stand where you are, it's up to you. If you want to kneel, whatever you feel led to do, we want to pray at this time, amen, because we know prayer makes a difference, amen. If there be somebody that asked you to pray for them on your way to church this morning, would that you would remember them and call their name in prayer unto God. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for the privilege to come boldly to your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you, O oh God, for having brought us all the way up to now. Thank you that you supplied our every need. Thank you for keeping us, even in spite of us. We thank you, Lord. 
We ask you to forgive us of our sins, fix our hearts, wash us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for these thy people and pray, oh God, thanking you for all you've done in their lives, every door you've opened, every way you've made, every time they were down and out, you stopped by and you lifted their spirits Every time they were burdened, you stopped by, Lord, and lifted their burden. You are faithful, and great is your faithfulness. Lord God, I thank you for blessing those who are here this morning and those that are joining in with us virtually. Thank you for your people who are gathered together in your name everywhere. Now, Lord, I know you know what they stand in need of. And I pray for these people that you will bless them, strengthen them, encourage their heart. Lord, help us all to get better. Help us to get better and better. Help us to grow in Christ. Help us, oh God, to be a witness for you everywhere we go. Help us to lift up your name, for your name is worthy to be praised. We pray that you'll strengthen your people. Pray for somebody this morning who's on the verge of giving up. Pray that you'll touch them, encourage their heart. Somebody's not feeling the best this morning, but oh God, I know you got healing power. You're able to heal no matter what the sickness is. Pray thank you for blessing Sister Alexander and pray that you'll continue to bless her. I know you are able to bless her to make a full recovery. Not only her, Lord, I pray for others whose names we have mentioned. And then there are some whose name I didn't mention, Lord, but you know who they are. Pray, oh God, that you'll send your healing power in Jesus' name. Touch their body, mind, and their spirit. And now, Lord, we pray that you'll comfort the bereaved families. Console them, oh God, as only you can do. Guide them even now. Strengthen them and keep them. And we pray for your church here and everywhere. Oh God, we pray that you'll strengthen us in your name. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work so that our labor won't be in vain in you. Now, Lord, I pray for families this morning. We need you. In our families, we need you in our homes. We need you in all that we put our hands to do. Pray that you'll guide us. You said in your word that you are able to order our steps. Pray that you'll guide us, Lord, as only you can. Now, Lord, somebody, oh God, lost their joy, and I know you're able to restore it to them. In Jesus' name, we pray for our elderly brothers and sisters. Strengthen them, help them, and keep them, Lord, even during this evening of their lives. Pray for our young people. Bless them. Pray for those who are in jail and who are in prison that your word will go forth. Touch their hearts as only you can. Pray for those in the armed forces that you'll be with them and keep them and guide them. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts. We need a word from you. And bless us through the power of your word. We'll be so careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. 
Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was, I know Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, I know that Jesus singing glory. Jesus, now I'm saved and sanctified, cause Jesus lived. I'm saved and sanctified, Jesus, saved and sanctified, cause Jesus lived. Glory, Jesus lift. I tell you that I'm so glad Jesus lifted. I'm so, so glad Jesus. Oh, I'm, yes, I am. Jesus glory high. Jesus lifted me Amen. the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 9 I'm reading verse 6. The Old Testament book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse is the verse that I would like to read today. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In that verse, you see that part of the verse where it says, the mighty God. I want to talk from the subject, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The prophet Isaiah gives to Israel here a word of hope for the people had been facing and would face dark times. But Isaiah lets them know that there is hope, that even in spite of the darkness, God would bring some light. And with that in mind, he pins this particular verse. He says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. He, he's talking about the Messiah. The one who he speaks of is Jesus Christ. 
And like I mentioned last Sunday, everything about Jesus is wonderful. I mean, everything. Uh, he's wonderful, but then he's counselor. Last week, we shared with you that Jesus is the counselor. If you need to talk to somebody and you want to be told what's right, you need to talk to Jesus. He counsels us through his word. He counsels us through the teaching and preaching of the gospel. He counsels us through the Holy Spirit. He is the counselor. But today I want to look at him being the mighty God. Uh, here, brothers and sisters, uh, Isaiah talks about him, uh, not for us just to hear what he has to say, but we're told about him so that we may accept him for who he is. Uh, he gives in this verse five descriptions, five great descriptions of Jesus Christ. And in the midst of them, he says, he is the mighty God. Are y'all going to pray with me a few minutes? Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus is God. Jesus was sent from God, and he is God. Now, some people don't accept the fact that Jesus is God. But the Bible testifies that Jesus is God. John in his gospel says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He did not say, and the word was a God. But he said, and the word was God. He goes on to say the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus didn't just appear on the scene when he was born of a virgin. He's always existed. <laughs> Jesus, brothers and sisters, was in the beginning. As a matter of fact, before the beginning had ever begun, Jesus had already began to begin. He's always existed. And he did it because he's God. Uh, brothers and sisters, now we must accept the fact that Jesus is God. Even John goes on and he says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Even in this sixth verse, I mentioned last week that the verse re reminds us of the dual nature of Jesus Christ. That he's man, but he's also God. <laughs> when you read in the Gospels, you can't help but see his humanity. When you read in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see his, his humanity revealed. Uh, he slept like a man. He got hungry like a man. He thirsted like a man. Am I right about it? He bled like a man. All of that testifies to his humanity. But at the same time, we see his deity. And unto us a son is given. He's God in the flesh. That's why he was able to calm the raging sea. That's why he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead. That's why he was able to take little boy's lunch and feed over 5,000 folk. Am I right about it? Because he's God. You got to accept the fact 
that Jesus is God. Don't let nobody tell you he's just another good man. He's more than just another good man. He's God's only begotten son. And he's God in the flesh. Now some will dispute this by saying, well, uh, I just don't understand it. Uh, if he's God, how in the world could he make himself a baby and be born a man? I don't understand that. Well, let me tell you, God never required of us to understand it. God just told us to believe it. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And don't, don't think it hard to believe because there's a whole lot of other things that we don't know about and we don't understand. But yet, we believe in it. Am I right about it? We don't know and understand everything about electricity. But we still turn lights on. <laughs> Are y'all praying with me? Yes, brothers and sisters. We don't, we don't know everything that they put in our medicine. As a matter of fact, we may not even know the pharmacy. But when they give it to us, based on the doctor's orders, we take it. I wish I had somebody to understand what I'm saying. You don't know all the ingredients that's in there. Matter of fact, most of the time, we don't even search it out. No. We just take it at the doctor's office because we believe. Yeah. Am I right about it? Right. We don't understand everything about the car we drive. But we ain't going to stop driving until we figure it all out. We act on it anyway. When you go to a restaurant, Many times you don't even know the cook. <laughs> you order your food and you don't know nothing about the cook. <laughs> you don't know whether it's a male or female. You don't know whether they're black or white. You don't know whether what their political party they are part of. You don't know whether they like black folk or don't like white folks. You don't know nothing. You just order the food. <laughs> I wish y'all could catch what I'm saying. Now, if we accept and believe everything else folks say, why can't we accept and believe that Jesus is God? Even though we don't understand it. Can't explain it all. But oh, I believe it. <laughs> I can't explain how Jonah survived in the belly of a whale three days and three nights. But I believe it. I can't explain how God made an axe head float for Elisha. But I believe it. I can't even explain how two men put a dead man in a grave on the bones of Elisha. And soon as that dead man's body touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. I can't understand it, but I just believe it. You got to believe. I, I can't understand or explain how plain water could be turned into wine without any additives. I can't explain it, but I believe it. So you got to believe that he is God. I believe it because God said it. Jesus said it, and the evidence proves it. Am I right? Yes, Jesus is the mighty God. The Hebrew word is El Jibba. Here it means that uh, he is mighty and strong. Am I right about it? He's mighty and strong. And so with that in mind, there are three things. Briefly, I want to look at it and I'll be through. First of all, in this verse, I see the promise concerning Jesus. Listen to what he says. He said, for to us, a child is born. 700 years before it happened, Isaiah said, for unto us, a child is born. And unto us, a son is given. And the government 
shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Yes, this text reminds us that God makes a promise. And he fulfills his promise. God did exactly what he said he would do. Jesus was born. Yes, just like God said he would be born. He was born of a virgin. Yes, God did just what he promised. He said he was coming and he came. Am I right about it? Well, brothers and sisters, all through history, God has kept his promises. He promised Abraham and Sarah they would have a child in their old age, and they did. He promised Moses that he would bring Israel out of Egypt, and he did. He promised Israel he would take them into a land that flowed with milk and honey, and he did. He promised Joshua and Caleb that they would have an inheritance in the land of Canaan, and he did. He said David would be the next king of Israel following Saul. And he did it. He promised Solomon wisdom and understanding as well as riches and a long life. And he did it. We've got to learn how to stand on the promises that God has already given us. He told us don't worry about what you're going to eat and drink. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He said, bring ye all the time into the storehouse. And see, will I not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Am I right about it? Jesus told us, I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He told us in his word, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He told us, if we ask, it shall be given you. If you seek, ye shall find. If you knock, it shall be opened. We got to stand on his promises. Take God at his word. That's the promise concerning Jesus. But then in the verse, we also see the power of Jesus. He said he's the mighty God, speaks of his power, how strong he is. Yes, another word uh, is the word hero. Yes, Jesus is the mighty God. Well, just how mighty is he? Well, first of all, he's incomparable, which means that there's nobody like him. Uh, there's no comparison to Jesus. Am I right about it? You can't put somebody on the same level of Jesus Christ. Jesus is in a class all by himself. You know, even in the sports world, if I just go to the sports world, if you mention one player, you can always compare them with another. Am I right about it? Uh, when you talk about uh, kick returners, you think about prime time, Dion. But in comparison, there's another fellow named Devin Hester who broke his record. <laughs> there's always a comparison. When you talk about Joe Lewis, you can compare him with Muhammad Ali. When you talk about Jack Nicholas, you can compare him with Tiger Woods. With everybody else, there's always somebody you can compare him with. 
But when it comes to Jesus, there's no comparison. He's in a class all by himself. He's, he's incomparable. Yes, he's the mighty God. Meaning he's incomparable. There's none that can compare with him. All the other gods are phony. All the other gods are fake. All the other gods are the work of men's hands. But only Jesus is the mighty God. He's real. Anybody know he's real? Yes. Oh, brothers and sisters, how foolish it is a man to make a God out of anything and anybody else. We already have a God. And his name is Jesus. Yes, it just don't make sense to make something that you call a God. And you got to shine it up. You got to pick it up when it falls. Am I right about it? You can, you can put some eyes in it, but they can't see you. I, I'd rather have a God who can pick me up. God who can clean me up. God whose eyes are always upon me. Jesus is the mighty God. There's no comparison. Nobody can copy him. Nobody can duplicate him. You, you, you can't copy Jesus. He can't be copied. It's dangerous to try to put yourself on the same level with him. Isaiah talks about in Isaiah 14 when he talks about Lucifer who said, I will exalt myself above the most high. But it won't work uh, because you can't go no bigger than God. He's so high, you can't go over him. He's so low, you can't go on him. He's so wide. You can't go around him. There's none like him. Nobody can do what God does. Only God can create. Who but God could put stink in a skunk? Who but God can put horns on a billy goat? Who but God who can put stripes on a zebra? And the stripes ain't begun to peel. Who but God can paint the sky blue and it stay that way? Who but God can put sweetness in peaches? Who but God can make water wet? Nobody but God. God is in a class all by himself. Only God can create. Man can only make something. And in order for man to make something, he got to use something that God has already created. Am I right about it? Yes. Only God can speak things into existence. That's how he created everything. He just spoke the word. He just said, let there be. And there was. Yes. You see, man can't do that. You can't speak and make things happen. You know, anybody talking about child, I just speak it. You, you ain't like God. If, if you can speak it, how come you didn't speak to COVID? This seemed like to me you should have spoke to COVID and said, COVID, go away. Are y'all listening to me? Only God can speak. And make things happen. God can open a door. And nobody can shut it. God can shut a door. And no one can open it. Because there's none like him. He's the mighty God. He's incomparable. But then he's immutable. When I say he's immutable. It means he never changes. All that he is today. He has ever been. And he will ever be. He never changes. Uh, God don't need to improve because there's no improvement to be made. Am I right about it? 
Malachi 3 and 6, he said, I am the Lord and I change not. I'm glad God stays the same. Anybody here glad that he stays the same? Listen to what God said about himself. He said, I'm merciful. And that has not changed. He said, I'm good. That has not changed. He said, I'm holy. That has not changed. He said, brothers and sisters, I'm faithful. That has not changed. He said, I'm mighty. That has not changed. Everything about him is still the same. Hebrews 13 and 8 says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Yes, he's the mighty God because he never changes. You and I got change written all over us. Every time we look around, we go through some changes. Am I right about it? Anybody here know I'm right when I tell you we got change all over us? Young folk need to know you got change all over you. If you don't believe me, you stick around long enough. Just live long enough. You going to see some change. You better listen to some of us old folk. We'll tell you, baby, these eyes are ours. Getting a little dimmer. Our steps get a little shorter. We can't run like we used to run. Am I right about it? Yeah, there was a time we used to jump up out of a chair. Now it takes a few minutes. We got to push. Sometimes we need somebody to help us. I wish I had a praying folk in here. It's change. Hair changes color. Because change is written all over us. I know some of us use a little dye sometimes, but but that still don't change the fact. Are y'all listening to me? As we get older, your teeth will start checking out on you. Start leaving. And yes, change. And sometimes we have to adjust to the change. And if we stay around long enough, we might be driving now. But later on, it might be why. To let somebody else drive us around. Because change. But not so with God. He's still the same. Oh, y'all, you can rely on God because He never changes. He's the mighty God, meaning He's immutable. But then He's the mighty God. Jesus is the mighty God because He's independent. He's independent. He don't need nobody else. He don't need no assistance. He don't need no help. Are y'all listening to me? He is not dependent on anyone else. He's self-existent. He's self-dependent. You and I, we need somebody. We can't make it on our own. Am I right about it? Yes, but not so with Jesus. He's the mighty God. Meaning that uh, he's independent. Yes, he don't need any help. There's nothing we can do to help God. Why would God need our help? When has God ever needed man's help? I mean, even in creation, that's why man was the last thing he made. <laughs> You see, if God had made man early on, man would try to take some of the credit. Saying, well, you know, uh, I helped God set out the grass. I helped God put the color in the flower. I helped God with this. But God made man last because God didn't need no help. Man thinks he can help God. God don't need your help. But now, you need God's help. Am I right about it? We got to have God's help. Oh, how foolish it is to think you don't need no help. 
Some of us, we need to swallow our pride and know that we need God to help us. Yes, don't try to make it in life on your own. You need some help. God will put some people in your life who can help you. Am I right about it? He is the mighty God because he's independent. But then he's the mighty God because he interrupts. He interrupts. God can interrupt anything at any time. He can interrupt anybody. And he don't need nobody's permission. Anybody know he can interrupt? Uh, in Genesis 11, some folk had gotten together to build a tower whose top would reach up into heaven. Uh, they had plans. But God interrupted their plans. He caused them to speak in different languages to the point where they couldn't understand one another. And they had to leave that thing alone. Because God interrupts. King Belshazzar had a party downtown Babylon in his palace. Uh, he drank wine before the thousands. He invited his lords, wives, and concubines. He drank even out the holy vessels that came from the Lord's house. He drank in honor of six gods. And the Lord was not in the number. He had a big time party. There was dancing. There was strutting. There was music. There was wine and revelry. But in the midst of the party, God crashed the party. Anybody know God is a party crasher? He crashed the party. For he, he had fingers of a man's hand writing on the wall that crashed the party because God can interrupt. Am I right about it? The Bible tells us in James 4, even when you and I make plans, we ought to be mindful to include God because whatever your plans are, God can interrupt them in any moment. Yes, he's the mighty God. He's got power to interrupt our lives. But then he's impeccable, which means that he's flawless. Jesus Christ is perfect. He does not make mistakes. He is the mighty God. He never messes up. God never errs. He never goes wrong. Not so with you and I. We mess up all the time because we, we are flawed. But the Lord is flawless. Yes, no wonder we say he is the mighty God. And oh, I got to hurry to a close. But this God of ours is also invincible. He never loses. Am I right about it? Uh, he never lost a battle. He is the conqueror. Am I right about it? Therefore, if you got Jesus on your side, you have sided with a winner because the Lord is invincible. Am I right about it? Even uh, when he was here on earth, uh, he said, no man takes my life. But I lay it down. He went on to say, not only do I lay it down, but I'll take it up again. He is invincible. No wonder the Bible says, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Anybody know that when you have Jesus, we have victory? Am I right about it? No wonder the songwriter said there's victory in Jesus. Am I right about it? 
Well, not only is he invincible, but I see that he also intervenes. He steps in just when we need him most. He's got the power to rescue. He got power to deliver. Remember, I told you that word means hero. You know, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but the Lord is my hero. Because time and time, he's rescued me. Anybody know when your back is up against the wall, he has a way of stepping in. Am I right about it? Is there anybody here don't mind being a witness that he'll step in just when you need him most? When you call him, he'll answer. Am I right about it? Well, brothers and sisters, when we needed somebody to pay our sin debt, Jesus stepped in. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, he gave his life. Am I right about it? He died for your sin and mine. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But early that Sunday morning, he rose again. Am I right about it? He is the mighty God. Finally, as I move to a close, not only do I see the promise concerning Jesus, not only do we see the power concerning Jesus, but finally we see the praise that is to be given to Jesus. He said he is the mighty God. Did anybody here know God is Worthy to be prayed. Am I right about it? If you know he's God, you can't help yourself but give him praise. Am I right? Praise him for who he is. Praise him for what he's done. Praise him for what he's going to do. Praise him for what he's doing right now. He's worthy to be praised. Anybody ever take time to bless his name? Anybody here know he is the mighty God? Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Oh, what a mighty God. Ain't he all right? Oh, he is. His name is Jesus. Anybody here love to call his name? Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. Oh, Jesus, whatever you need, you'll find it in Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's the mighty God. Bless his name. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah to his name. He's worthy of all the praise. Do you believe he's worthy? Oh, yeah. God bless you. What a mighty, what a mighty God. We serve, able to save to the uttermost. Lord Jesus, bless his name. Bless his name. 
What a mighty God. We serve. Amen. And you know, if you know him, you don't have a problem worshiping him. Amen. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the mighty God. Amen. I want to extend the invitation. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. He died to save sinners. Amen. He said, I've come to seek and save that which was lost. His name is Jesus Christ. Only, only he can save. Only he can redeem. I invite you, if you have never accepted Christ, if you'll stand where you are, if you're willing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can do that today. You can do that this morning. He's able to save you. He's able to make you a new creature. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And if you'll stand where you are, if you want to accept Christ, I'll be glad to pray with you and pray on your behalf. If you strayed away from God, it's a good day to come back to him. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. There might be others. If you'll stand. God is a God who's willing and ready to forgive us, to give us another chance. Bless you for standing. I want to pray with you right now. Father God, I thank you for these who have stood. Oh God, who just want to get to know you more want to do better. Lord, we know that you are forgiven, God. You're ever merciful. And I pray that you'll look on them. I pray that you'll restore them. Touch them. Lift them, oh God, as only you can. Bless them that they may well walk with you and know you more you fully for who you are for you are the mighty God you're wonderful you're the counselor you're the everlasting father and you're the prince of peace now I thank you for them now keep them hold them as only you can in Jesus name and then Lord I pray for those who have joined virtually there might be somebody else who feel the same way. Look on them, oh God. Touch them. Forgive them. Strengthen them. Lift them up in your name. And help them to be faithful unto you. Steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people said amen. God bless you. God bless you.
us, Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. If, if there are any that have not yet given their tithes and offerings, you can do so immediately following the benediction. The offering containers will be here at the front. Again, I express my appreciation for all of our members and everyone who continually support uh, the Lord's Church, First Missionary Baptist Church here. And uh, we pray God's blessings will continue to rest upon you and keep you. If there be nothing else, let us stay. Lord, thank you for another chance to give. Bless our giving. Bless those that desire to give but do not have. Pray that you'll get the glory through it all. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all the people said, Amen. Bless you.